Andy here, just putting the finishing touches on my breakfast. Here, meet Egbert. Hi! Oh, you know I've really got a headache. Help! A headache, Egbert? Let me fix that. It's time for a little brain surgery. This won't hurt a bit. <laughs> Hmm, let me see. Oh dear, it's just as I suspected. No brain. What? I don't have a brain? No Egbert, and no brain, no pain. Hey, what does a brain do? A brain helps you think, um, think things. Teaches you to learn stuff. Helps you to learn more. A brain helps you think. The um, manager of your whole body, like it tells um, the rest of the parts of your body what to do. Well, they've certainly been using their brains. Now, I think the brain has lots of little people inside it, men or women pushing buttons and pulling levers and really making your brain work. Oh, somehow I don't think that's how it happens. Well, I've got a brain, and you've got a brain, right? Yeah, nothing surer. Ever had a headache? Well, I'll tell you what, the common cure for a headache a few centuries ago was a hole in the head, and they did it with a knife or an axe. I'd rather have a headache. Well, scientists have been studying the brain for hundreds of years and they're discovering new things all the time. Okay, investigators, what do we know about the brain? Well, I know that mine sits up here and it's protected by my skull. And apparently, it looks a lot like this, celosia flower, all covered in wrinkles and ridges. But apparently, it's bigger. It's bigger than a large tomato, but it's smaller than a large cabbage. Apparently, the brain is about the size of a large grapefruit, but it's different. It's softer and squishier and squashier, and it just so happens I have a real brain with me. One moment, please. This is a real brain. It's a cow's brain. And look at it. You can see all the wrinkles and ridges. This is one half, and this is the other. They sit together like that. Oop, there's a bit of blood there. Oh, it is very squashy and squishy. And our brain is apparently about the same colour. Pinkish. Hmm. You know, I think we really need to see the real thing, don't you? Well, why don't you come here for a moment? That's right. Now, you know I would never hurt Yoozy Woozy, would I? Hey, hey, no, come here. Come here. No, that's right. Oh. I'll just have to find a brain somewhere else. I have a real brain. Are you ready for the real thing? Here it is. Real plastic. <laughs> amazing. Different parts of it are in charge of different jobs and different parts of your body. Like this wrinkly outer layer called the cortex. That's in charge of all your thinking. So you think about what you're going to say next. Hmm. You think about that using your cortex. And underneath this wrinkly layer are a whole lot of white nerves called cerebrum. Different sections of those nerves are in charge of different jobs. Well, scientists have mapped out the areas of your brain and it looks a bit like this. Your personality control is here and it makes you who you are, what you laugh at, the friends you choose and what you like to do. Control of muscles and movements is taken care of here and that's the part that makes you smile and laugh and run. Your brain is made up of two halves called hemispheres. They're joined together down the middle by nerves. And the really interesting thing is the right side of your brain controls the left side of your body. 
and the left side of your brain is in charge of the right side of your body. Ah, pretty amazing, isn't it? Something else too is this left side of the brain is in charge of your logical processes. Your reading, your writing, your arithmetic and your ability to perform scientific experiments. The right side of your brain is in charge of your creative elements, the ability to draw and to, to, to sing, to play music and to dance. And as you can see, some people have more abilities than others. Your thalamus is tucked right in here. And it's like the reception desk for the brain. It receives all the messages before passing them on. Hello, Brain's office, how can I help? Certainly one moment, putting you through. It also receives all the messages and instructions from this wrinkly cortex before passing it on to the rest of your body. What's that? A message for the third toe on the left foot? Sure. It's standing on a what? It's standing on a nail. Passing the message on. This is the cerebellum, and it's often known as the mini brain. And it's in charge of things like coordination and all the things that you do automatically, like walking and running and drinking water and riding a bike. Once you've learned how to, of course. Your whole body, including your brain, is made up of electrical wiring and the form of neurons. And neurons look a bit like this. A tree called an axon with a cell body and lots of branches called dendrites. Now, a whole clump of neurons together is called a nerve. But those neurons never touch. There's this gap in the middle. It's a very special gap called a synapse. So when your brain wants to send a message to the rest of your body, what it does is send an electrical charge racing up the axon to the dendrites. It forms a juice called a neurotransmitter, which is the message, and it squirts that to the next neuron. Why don't I show you? Look, you be this neuron here, and this, these can be your dendrites, okay? And I'll be the neuron here. Now, let's see. I've got a message for you. So, an electrical charge builds up. It comes racing up the axon, it forms a neurotransmitter, and it gets that message across to you like this. I think you got that message. Your brain is working all the time, even when you're asleep. It needs to keep your heart beating and your lungs breathing. Without those two things, oxygen and blood, your brain's a goner. Oh, you need to keep your brain moist too, so drink lots of water. And the golden rule, the same as any part of your body, use it or lose it. You're never too young or too old to learn something new. Oh, and of course, if you're on a bike, Use a skid lid. You get one head and one brain. You can't afford to lose them. So what does your brain do? Well, it does a lot of things. It's the control tower for your body. Maybe you have some questions you'd like answered on Susie's World. You can write to us at Susie's World, P.O. Box, 34307 Birkenhead, Auckland, or email me. My address is susie at treehut.com. See you next time. And apparently it looks a bit like this. A silly, silly, silly what flower? Oh, this one here? No, that's a break. <laughs> there we go, I got it, I got it. <laughs> that was very nearly scary. Thanks to New Zealand On Air, we couldn't have done it without you.